Our guest today is President and Chief Executive Officer of Navy Pier. Navy Pier occupies 50 50 acres of Chicago's premier waterfront space and welcomes more than 9 million guests annually. Our guest today graduated from St. Ignatius College, College Prep and she earned her Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism at Marquette University. Ladies and gentlemen, Marilyn Gardner. Marilyn. All right, have fun up here. Thank you so much, Jay. It's great to be with all of you today. I love seeing so many familiar faces. Thank you for being here with me. It's perfect timing being here today as just yesterday, Condi Nast announced that Chicago had been voted the best large city in the U.S. So let's hear it for Chicago. And quick shout out to David Whitaker and his team from Choose Chicago and the Chicago Sports Commission for helping leading the marketing efforts of this incredible city. Thank you. At the pier, we're so proud to be part of the cultural landscape that makes our city so great. So I want to thank our board chair, Bill Brodsky, for leading our efforts. And we're, thank you, Bill. We're also joined by Lori Healy, as you heard. And I think I see Mike Toulis, Richard Price, Donna LaPietra. So thank you all for being here with us. And if I missed anyone, thank the entire board. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Navy Pier team, too. If you could all stand to be acknowledged, I'd appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. They're the ones who really make it happen day after day. So thank you so much. You make me and the entire city proud of what we contribute to our great, great city. So thank you. Now, not to age myself, but I must share that uh, I celebrate a milestone, a significant milestone year this year. Um, actually, this month, I uh, will celebrate 25 years at Navy Pier. <laughs> and while I haven't changed at all, the pier has changed dramatically. So when I started, the pier was what you might call a fixer-upper. It needed a lot of love, a whole lot of love. And today, it's become a local and global must-see. It's a must-experience destination. Take a look. So much of that transformation has happened just over the past five years since we started our redevelopment. When we became a nonprofit in 2011, there were plenty of skeptics, but there were also a lot of believers. Polk Brothers Foundation, Gillian, thank you for being here. 
Aon, I see a team from Aon here, thank you, Fifth Third Bank, People's Energy, to all of our donor partners, thank you for believing in our vision for the peer. And to our corporate partners, our on-peer cultural partners, Chicago Shakespeare Theater, Chicago Children's Museum, WBEZ Radio, and to all of the business operators on the pier and the now hundreds of donors, thank you for believing. Together, we've invested more than $380 million in our redevelopment. We knew that Navy Pier could be something pretty special. A physical transformation, a programmatic transformation, a great civic landmark reborn. Or, as our new marketing campaign puts it, more than you imagine. Now that's something to celebrate. In fact, we'll be celebrating on October 23rd at our second gala fundraising event called Experience 19. And our main stage performer that night is a Navy Pier success story, Katie Caden. If you watched The Voice, you saw her mind-blowing performance that caught the attention of all four celebrity coaches. And while America's just starting to discover her talent, we booked Katie for our inaugural gala in 2017. It was her first paid performance for an audience that big, 600 people. Now she's singing for millions. She blew the roof off her blind studio audition. Social media blew up too. Now take a look and you'll understand why. If you want my love, all right. If you really do, what? No, hey, baby, just ask me. You know. My name is Katie Caden. I'm a professional musician in Chicago. I've only been doing it for about eight years. Okay. Oh my God. I was afraid to perform. I was a chubby chick living in a skinny girl's <laughs> world. So I didn't feel too good about it, but now I'm okay. Now that was more than Katie could have ever imagined for herself. And if you want to see Katie perform at our gala, and support the free programming that we provide annually. Shameless plug for our gala. We are nearly sold out, so don't wait. She might actually blow the dome off the Aon Grand Ballroom, so get your tickets now. Speaking of hot tickets, who here had the chance to see Six at the Yard Theater? How about that? From the North American premiere at our very own Chicago Shakespeare Theater to the Big Apple, it's now the hottest tic ticket on Broadway. So congrats to our partners at Chicago Shakespeare Theater. We're proud to be your home. I'm so proud of how far we've come. But what I'm particularly proud of, and I want to share with you today, is something that you might not realize. Navy Pier is so much more than a place of fun and beauty. Navy Pier has become a place of belonging and opportunity unlike any other. You may think you know the pier, but believe me, it really is more than you imagine. In fact, the ripple effect extends far beyond the pier itself. Take this article. For those who don't know, Taylor Bennett, is a musician and the brother of Chance the Rapper. He told the Chicago Reader in an interview last year that, I quote, Navy Pier has become one of the few places in downtown Chicago where kids from the south and west sides can meet in peace. 
that's as much of a Navy Pier story as the one about how your grandparents, are you Ed Mazer, right? I don't know where. <laughs> oh, and Lester too. Uh, went to college at Harvard on the Rocks or how you got engaged on the wheel. It's a story of belonging, of feeling that this pier is yours. This year we launched a pilot program with a couple of sixth grade classes from CPS schools that have limited resources to take field trips. Some of the students had never been to the lakefront, much less a cultural destination like Navy Pier. We covered their transportation and welcomed the students to experience the ship of tolerance. This interactive art installation presented in partnership with Expo Chicago taught them about equity and inclusion. Now we have a goal that no student reaches seventh grade without having visited Navy Pier. Bold and ambitious, yes, but we know we can make it happen. Now let me tell you about what opportunity means at the pier because it's more than you can imagine too. We're the first employer for hundreds of young people from under-resourced neighborhoods. Just like those sixth graders, many have never seen the lake, have never been to the pier, and haven't ever had a job before coming to work with us. We don't want to be just a first employer. We want to be one of the city's best first employers. And thanks to an anonymous foundation donor, we partnered with Skills for Chicagoland's Future to offer these teenagers formalized training and other opportunities they wouldn't get elsewhere. And because most of them haven't actually had a paycheck before, we partner with our phenomenal partners at Fifth Third Bank to teach classes in financial literacy. Now these young people are more confident in their financial futures. They feel set up for success no matter where they go next. I'm also incredibly proud of our partnership with Southside Occupational Academy, a transition center for students aged 16 to 22 with cognitive disabilities. We actually built a classroom where the students come to school at Navy Pier every Monday through Friday to learn important life skills. Their teacher, Sharon Bouchon, and a couple of our students are here with us today. Sharon, will you come up and share your experience? Hello, everyone. I'm going to try not to get emotional. Can you all hear me? Everyone can hear me. Um, Navy Pier has not only changed my life, but my students. Oh. <laughs> They have hired eight of my students who have disabilities, ages 18 to 21. They've hired eight of them to come and work and earn paychecks and help their parents out at home at CPS um, school. Um, I met with Brian and Mike Degnan, and they were immediately on board, and they said, we have to present this to Marilyn and the board. So the board people, thank you so much, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. But they did not know at that time how much they would change people's lives beyond, they, they can't even imagine, can't imagine. Um, not only do the ones that maybe didn't get hired, they also provided a place for them to um, be comfortable and stay and visit. So now they're getting them off the streets and they're going down to the pier. And when they go to the pier, which we call the people's pier, they see security or they see Marilyn or see they, Brian or Aramark, whoever they worked with, and they like acknowledge them. Hello, hi, how are you? Um, I have one student with me today. She's sitting over there. Delia, can you stand? This is my student, Delia. Star student, right, Delia? Star student is right. Um, she had told me that when she got the job, she can help her mom pay bills and about her like story. but. She also told me that when she goes to the pier before, she would get picked on and people would make fun of her size or her, her disability. And she says now that she just feels so safe and welcoming. And just that, little, just that little thing that the pier did by opening their doors to my program really changed lives. I, I, just, I can never thank Navy Pier enough, Marilyn enough, um, Aramark enough, um, and then like, McCormick Place jumped on and Lori Healy and some of those students are working there. So I just want to thank everyone, especially Navy Pier, for taking the first step because you'll just never know 
how much you've changed their lives. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sharon. And they too have changed our lives at the pier. It's so wonderful to have you as part of the Navy Pier team. Thank you. Navy Pier means opportunity for businesses too. The opportunity to broaden market and reach. We've helped open doors for small businesses with big ideas. We literally went into the neighborhoods to find the best of the best to create the Chicago-centric experience you now find in the Fifth Third Bank Family Pavilion. Here's a great example. From Brown Sugar Bakery on 75th Street to Navy Pier, Stephanie Hart. Thank you, Marilyn, for this opportunity to share with all of you. Um, the opportunity to export Brown Sugar Bakery from my neighborhood to the pier has been exponential. It has done so many different things for Brown Sugar, but also for my community. To just name a few, one, I get to represent the sweet side of Chicago. <laughs> Yay. I call myself Chicago's cake now, and so do a lot of other people. <laughs> that visibility has uh, manifested in us being James Beard nominated, <laughs> Illinois made. And these are things that not just impact me and Brown Sugar, but our whole community. The opportunity uh, for the peer for me as a business owner has been immense. I have had so much growth through the opportunity to learn from the other partners at the pier. Everyone is open and sharing, and I think we're a better business. I know we're a better business because of it. But I'd also like to touch on, and I knew I was exporting out, but I wanna talk about importing back into my community. So you would be so surprised at how inspiring it is for both entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs from my neighborhood to say, wow, somebody can start a business on 75th Street and end up at Navy Pier. That is so motivating to so many and it gives me the opportunity to share about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship with my community. I think for me, the most surprising thing that being in the pier has offered my community is that folks who visit the pier visit 75th Street. They have the peer experience and they want to explore more. That has, uh, you, you'd be so surprised. We had um, visitors from, um, at the peer from the BBC, a television show that now has come to 75th Street to film an episode of Hairy Guys. They, <laughs> these two guys are very much, they're gonna ride their bikes all the way uh, down Route 66 and they start off on 75th Street because of our exposure from the pier. In addition, the families that pack up and on their way back to Michigan, on their way back to Indiana, decide that they wanna have the full experience on our street, then they go across and they eat at Lim's Barbecue. <laughs> Everybody, peach cobbler and uh, barbecue on 75th Street. This summer that culminated in the Chicago Tribune Food Bowl having an event on 75th Street for all of the businesses. So I'm so proud to participate um, in Navy Pier. I'm so proud to be a part of the growth and I'm so proud to represent Chicago at Navy Pier. Thank you. And Stephanie, we're proud of you. Thank you for being our partner. And you all have Stephanie to thank for the cupcakes that you'll find on your way out. <laughs> but don't go yet. Don't go yet. I have more to say. <laughs> of the 70 businesses and four nonprofits on the pier, 26% are minority owned and 37% are owned by women. By being at the pier, these entrepreneurs, Stephanie included, are bringing exposure and ultimately more business to their communities. Take the neighborhood artisan markets we started this past summer. 
Each week, vendors from different Chicago neighborhoods set up shop at the pier. Organizers of our Bronzeville market told us their vendors use the pier as a platform to grow their businesses and introduce their neighborhood to new visitors. That's the ripple effect at work, extending opportunity beyond the pier itself. We even have opportunities for bees at Navy Pier. Yes, bees. They live and work on the green roof of the People's Energy Welcome Pavilion in Polk Brothers Park all thanks to a partnership with the Chicago Honey Co-op. It's just one way we carry out our commitment to sustainability and sweetness, Stephanie, right? <laughs> Belonging and opportunity. It's what we do best at Navy Pier, and it's how we live out our mission as the People's Pier. Can you think of any other place in Chicago, or frankly, in the world, where all of this happens? Where people come to celebrate Ramadan, and Holy, and the Latinx Music Festival, or where more than 21,000 people from all over Chicago enjoyed a huge indoor beach in the middle of a polar vortex. <laughs> where else have 195 million guests over the course of 25 years had different and very personal experiences? And speaking of which, I hope people are writing out their favorite Navy Pier memories like Jay suggested. I'd like to share some. So what's next, you ask? Well, we've accomplished much in a very short period of time, but there is much on our horizon. The Sable, our seven-story, 220-room hotel, will open this summer. And look at those views. It will be spectacular. Now, does anyone know the significance of the name Sable other than Navy Pier team? No. Okay, well, the Sable was one of two aircraft carriers docked at Navy Pier in the 40s for flight training. So, hearkening back to the historical significance and impact the pier has had on uh, Chicago for many, many years. We also have a marina in the works. And I mean, look at that. Won't that be terrific for tourism in particular, but great for boaters from all over Chicago and throughout the Great Lakes. So we're looking forward to that coming to fruition as well. We're also reimagining Pier Park, the Crystal Gardens, and the Far East End Plaza for the future. And with support from Chicago's generous philanthropic community, we're confident we'll transform these spaces too. Now come see me at the pier and I'll show you more because there's a lot more. In fact, if it's the right time of day, I may even treat you to a drink at Offshore. Aside from being the world's largest rooftop bar as confirmed by Guinness Book over the summer, <laughs> it just won its first of many, many Architectural Design Awards to come, and I don't know if Jackie Koo's here, but congrats to Koo and her whole team for this incredible design. And trust me, like so many other spaces on the pier, this will be a phenomenal place all year round. So don't hesitate to come fall, winter, it will be absolutely terrific. And when you take in that view, when you see how the city, sky, and water converge at Navy Pier, remember, it belongs to all of us. It's our place of discovery and wonder. The relationships that are being built, the opportunities we're extending, the communities we're helping to strengthen, the impact of our peer is far reaching. Together, we can help Navy Pier continue to be more than you imagine. Thank you. Tremendous. Wasn't that great, folks? Tremendous. So, with Marilyn. Right oh, right here. <laughs> right. If anybody has any questions that you would like to ask uh, Marilyn to uh, answer, you have these four by six blue cards. Just hold them up, and members of our staff, I see Sam and Amanda will collect them. And if you have any memories, of Navy Pier. We'll get to that after um, our questions. Okay.
You're ready. ready. I'll tell you. Navy Pier looks a lot different today than when I went to school there in 1960. More to come, Ed. More That's to come. tremendous. Okay. More to come. This is from Claire Agra, who's with Chicago's First Lady. Yes. And she wants to know what are some of the other things on the horizon for Navy Pier that you can disclose at this time? Well, I mentioned the hotel, the Sable, which will open this summer. Uh, we are working very diligently with the city to ensure that we're able to move forward with uh, the marina, which I think, Holly, you'd be very interested. It will be a terrific asset uh, for not only the pier, but for the entire city. So we're excited about that. Uh, we are hoping to find partners to help us reimagine Crystal Garden, Pier Park, the Far East End Plaza, and we're working to secure grant funding for um, upgrading the adjacencies to the hotel um, in Festival Hall and the Grand Ballroom. So more to come on all those things, but also the incredible um, programmatic transformation that's been underway. Um, you'll see lots of fun surprises in the years to come, thanks to Michelle Boone and her ACE team. So more to come on those things. Well, thank you, Michelle, and thank your ACE team. Um, this question is from Christina Jorgis. She's with the Kaleidoscope LLC. You've been there 25 years, correct? 25 years, and you started here, and now you're all the way up here, which is fantastic. Can you share your perspective on how CEOs today can find ways to drive their culture to be inclusive, productive, and engaged? In 25 words or less. <laughs> I'll try to keep it quick. Chris, I didn't see you, but hello. Thank you for being here. Um, just, I think... The examples that you saw earlier really speak to that. And we do work very hard to create a culture of um, inclusion. And our um, VP of talent is here somewhere. Oh, there, Narissa Bailey is here. And she has a terrific team. She's built a great team at the pier. And we work internally on culture, but it's also when we think about the pier that we have 60 full-time employees and we hire about 200 to 300 part-timers, they're included in that Navy pier team. And then with those who you had the opportunity to meet today, Stephanie and Sharon, you know, it's all about inclusivity, equity, and inclusion throughout the pier. And, um, you know, we're all partners in this. And we have so many terrific partners that I see here, too, um, and donors that really help drive that inclusion. So it's, it's always a team effort, but it's something that is very important to us. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is from Scott Truchin, who's with the Tangled Roots Brewing Company. Are they out on Navy Pier? They're actually in Ottawa, Illinois. Okay. Well, basically his question is, it, Navy Pier is a hot spot for locals, uh, visitors, and so forth. What about the winter months? How do you plan to attract people out to the pier when it's really cold and blustery? Well, one of the um, main reasons that we looked at including a hotel in the in Navy Pier's landscape is to ensure that we had that year round 24 hour presence. So when that opens next year, that will be terrific. Uh, but we also put, as I had said, a lot of effort into our programming, activating the spaces. You saw the beach earlier. And again, that drew 21,000 guests uh, during the polar vortex. So it's the programming, it's all of the incredible Chicago-centric um, dining and retail opportunities at the pier um, that provide that platform for uh, indoor year-round fun and excitement. So lots of programming and uh, terrific opportunities as we're looking at new attractions to bring on to the pier. So again, more on that to come, but the pier is open and very active year-round. Absolutely. 
Okay, we've got a couple more questions here and maybe some memories. Uh, this is from Tim King with the Chicago Park District. Tim, where are you at? Right down here. Okay. Seeing, now some of us may not recognize this. You may need an explanation. Seeing Iron Maiden at Chicago Fest when he was a child. <laughs> so my first memory is seeing the Buckinghams uh, at Chicago Fest in 1983. Donna, you can guess who I was with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, now we've got several folks here. For example, Lester. You told us that um, you went to school at Navy Pier in 1953. You left in 53. Started in 51. Harvard on the Rocks. And I remember not only the pier for its sheer availability for everyone to go to school because of its cost, the professors and everything was so important to me. And there was a professor at uh, Green who I never had taken any accounting courses, really took a liking to me. And my first semester got me a job at Remington Manufacturing Company. So the peer means as much to me as, as it does to so many. That's from Mr. Uh, Federal you. Reserve Thank in you. Chicago. Thank you, Lester. Lester, how much was tuition way back then? Seventy-five no. bucks a semester. All the hours you could right. carry, right? And we've got Jim Riley down here. Jim, you were a student at Navy Pier also. One of your memories? $180 a year by the time I got there. <laughs> and uh, we had great memories there. Uh, the memories I have uh, that really no one put up with today was when we, when we took notes in the wintertime. We used to wear gloves, a hat, you remember, and, uh, and cut your coat. And you have to sit there and freeze in the rooms because there was no heat way out at the end of the pier. And, uh, and then in the spring when the rains came, you stand against the wall because the, 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 the water came down in, in the middle of the room in buckets. And uh, no one thought twice of it. Uh, and of course, getting to one, the interesting thing was getting from one class to another because you could never, if there were more than 50% of the pier, because the crowds in that little hallway, you couldn't get to class. You'd be five, 10 minutes late. Everybody was five or 10 minutes late in class every time. And uh, outside of that, it was a, a fun place to be. <laughs> well, Sounds great. <laughs> if I remember correctly, uh, there was like eight or 10 minutes in between classes. And it was approximately, what, about two-thirds of a mile from the west end it's to the five east? five-eighths of a mile. Five-eighths. So you really had a hustle. You really had a move. Right. It was the bodies that, that you had to get through. It was, it was, such, it was a, a hallway from about the size from, you know, you, you would be right here. And there were hundreds of kids walking down that same wall, hallway. We used to get to the end of the rotunda. There. That was our cafeteria, the, the big... Uh, what do you, what do you, oh, the Aon Grand Ballroom. Oh, yeah. And yeah. We'd, all, we'd, we'd go and have lunch there, and we'd cut class and play bridge. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. Well, and I don't know if people know Jim or remember, but Jim Riley uh, served as the chairman of Navy Pier when we were part of the Metropolitan Pier and Exposition Authority probably some 15 years ago. Could that be? But yes, yeah, so a great partner to Navy Pier. Yes. And, he, and he still plays bridge, by the way. Um, absolutely, just the best. Um, fireworks. Yes. Wednesday night, Saturday night. And I've noticed there have been a few long. other nights. Yes, some private events do uh, great. secure fireworks for their events. But we do host free fireworks every Wednesday and Friday, Memorial Day to Labor Day. So Will there, you have fireworks uh, for New Year's New Eve? Year's New Eve, Year's of course, Eve, of course. Great. Okay. What is New Year's without fireworks? My late business partner and Paul Green and I, we happen to live in separate buildings with our wives looking down on Navy Pier. And the first night we happened to live there, fireworks went off. We thought we were being invaded. <laughs> I started to call 911 to see what was going on, but that's terrific. Um, 
<laughs> Is there any possibility, you know, there are tour boats that come down uh, from Toronto and elsewhere do the Great Lakes, and uh, they end up, currently they're docking at the International Port out okay, on the actually, far southeast side. Any chances to have these dock at Navy Pier? Sure. We had, um, Brian, remind me, we had Hornblower Cruises did a river cruise through the Great Lakes. They came from Canada twice this summer, twice so far, or this past summer, and they are scheduled to be back in five more this year wow. or within the next, by the end of 19, next summer. Five more? Yeah. Into 20, right? It's Wow. Oh, okay, That's so cool. end of the year. So Great Lakes River cruising. So and the ships are a sight to see, even if you're not cruising on them. It's really neat to see them docked at the pier. So uh, a terrific new asset to the pier. And Brian, I have another potential client for you. The group called the Road Scholars. They're looking. They've been docking out at 95th Street, and they would like love to dock at uh, Navy Pier and spend money there, which they can't spend at 95th Street. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? Any other memories? Well, I'll share one last memory uh, with you there because like Jim and Lester, I went to school there in 1960. Um, and at that time, the physical education facility was in a separate Quonset hut out where the Polk Pavilion is today. And there was a huge World War II mural in that building of either Army troops or Navy Seabees hitting the beach somewhere. You had like 10 minutes to get there. But the best part was parking. You know, there's a lot of available parking at Navy Pier right now. When we went to school there, it was a private operation that a fellow set up to the right side of Navy Pier where a lot of the tour buses stop now. And um, he would flip quarters with you, 50 cents. And if you called heads, and it came up heads, you parked for free. If it came up tails, you paid double. That was entrepreneurship in Chicago, 1960. <laughs> okay, Marilyn, any other questions? Great, thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank yeah. you.